Cell 411 is a free app for Android and iOS that replaces government-controlled 911. Cell 411 allows you to preset a group of friends or private organizations to show up in any emergency. Cell 411 is a nightmare for the state because it proves their so-called services aren't needed. Cell 411 has had thousands of installs, and of course it's covered by the Bitcot No Government License. Cell 411 because your friends won't shoot you when you're in trouble. Without the government, who would build the emergency services? You and Cell 411. Get it today at Get Cell. Cell411.com. That's getcell411.com. Hey everybody, this is Jeremy with another sporadically produced episode of Abolitionist Abstractions. So today I want to talk a little bit about a trend I've noticed in the Liberty-esque communities. Uh, it's something that's actually been going on for quite a while, but it's really started to come to a head lately and really started to grind my gears. And this would be the overwhelming number of people within this community who seem to be more concerned with uh, patting themselves on the back for, for having these theories that they think are so wonderful and also taking shots at one another uh, instead of actually trying to achieve freedom. Now, as far as taking shots at one another, I, of course, am not above this. I, I, do, I do this uh, from time to time myself, and I understand uh, the propensity for people to do such a thing. And, you know, I also understand the need to feel accepted, which is why so many people uh, are striving for the likes on social media. Uh, you know, and again, I get that. You know, I produce content. I do, th I do this show every once in a while. I do the Seeds of Liberty weekly. I do, you know, I do the Freedom Fiends a couple of times a week. So, you know, of course, I appreciate when people like and share and comment on my stuff. Uh, you know, so I, I understand that. But it really seems that a lot of people are a lot more focused on that aspect than actually trying to achieve freedom. And, you know, as far as the theories go, well, that's a whole other issue. And this is something I've been talking about uh, on the Seeds of Liberty recently. I think we actually put out a couple of Patreon episodes about it too. And it's, to me, you know, having an, uh, an ethically sound theory um, of how you want to live your life or how you want to see the world uh, be is great. But if your ethical theory doesn't have a practical application, then what purpose does it serve? I don't know. I've been trying to get an answer to that question, but none of these folks seem to want to answer that. So I, I think a lot of people are, are more focused on these things than actually trying to obtain freedom which is, is troublesome to me. You know, I am somebody who has strived for years now to try to get as much freedom as possible in my lifetime. Uh, and more importantly, try to get as much freedom for myself so that my kids will have even more freedom as they get older. You know, and, and I don't expect everybody to follow the same path. And I don't expect everybody to have the same vision. But when I first came to the Liberty community, you know, four or five years ago, I met a lot of people who all seemed very interested in that type of thing. Like the common goal seemed to be, we need to find a way to dismantle government and we need to try to move towards freedom before we actually leave this planet. And in the years following, a lot of those people kept parroting those lines, but now there seems to be an all-out war uh, between different factions within the liberty movement. And most of these people seem a hell of a lot more concerned with tearing each other down rather than actually trying to work together to achieve what I believed was the common goal. You know, now obviously I, like everybody else, I have my biases and I see this a lot with the alt-right 
crowd, as I refer to them. Um, but it goes both ways. There's people on both sides of just about every debate who act in such a manner that it really seems that they're more concerned with getting pats on the back from their supporters than actually achieving anything. And like I said, that's troublesome because hell, man, I want to be free and I'm doing everything I can to make myself freer. But when I have a community around me of people who are supposedly after the same thing, who spend more time bickering with each other on social media and making fun of each other on social media than actually getting out there and doing anything, it makes it a lot harder for me to visualize any of this actually occurring at some point before I die. So, you know, I, I, I really, I really wish people would uh, focus more on actually getting things done. Now, this, of course, is not to say that infighting is a bad thing. I have said for quite a long time that I think infighting in, within any group is not only healthy, but it's essentially necessary. Well, essentially necessary. That's kind of uh, repetitive, but it, it's necessary because that is how ideas not only get formed, but they get improved upon. Because if you are, if there's a difference of opinion, you can either work it out and come up with a better idea because you disagree with the original idea, or you end up going your separate ways and doing things a little differently. But in my mind, that's still progress. So I'm not saying that infighting is a bad thing. I've never said that infighting is a bad thing. I hate the people that go around saying, oh, all this infighting has to stop. Well, if you think infighting has to stop, then you really don't understand how these things kind of work. You don't under you don't really understand how ideas are formulated. You know, you, you have to have pushback because if you put ideas out there and you get nothing but compliments on them and pats on the back, well, then you end up like a lot of these people who seem to seek that over anything else. And you know, this has come out a lot in the so-called open border versus closed border debate within the libertarian and anarchist communities, which I've mentioned multiple times before is complete and utter bullshit because I have gotten labeled an open border guy multiple times, even though I've asked repeatedly for somebody to pr produce any piece of evidence where I have ever advocated for open borders uh, because I'm pretty sure it's not out there. I mean, hell, the last article I wrote before I scrapped the LP altogether and decided that that's it, I'm a fucking anarchist, was a piece I wrote for a website I used to work for that was specifically about the borders. It was about immigration, and it was written from a conservative-esque standpoint. You know, it actually almost pained me to write it because I was on my way to becoming an anarchist at that point, but I had promised the owner of that site that I would continue writing in the vein that he had hired me in. Uh, but it was becoming increasingly harder for me to do so. But that last piece was all about how the border was good. You know, so even before I became an anarchist, I wasn't advocating for open borders. So when people accuse me of such, it's, it's pretty laughable. But you you see this in that, you know, that so-called debate. Uh, and more so, like I said, you know, obviously with my biases, I notice this more, but you see it in that alt-right crowd when it comes to the dreaded leftists and how everybody is now a leftist if they don't agree with them. And, you know, if I put my tinfoil hat on for a minute, could surely seem like a lot of these people, or at least a couple of them, are just agent provocateurs. You know, I'm not saying that they are. That's why I said if I put my tinfoil hat on. But you know, with with that level of divisiveness and that level of vitriol being tossed around and trying to smack down entire segments of populations based on this loose interpretation of what a leftist is, um, you know, it, 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 it seems like it could be possible that these people are here just to disrupt things. You know, again, I'm not saying that anybody in particular is, it just, you know, seems like it could be likely. So, you know, like I said, while, while infighting is good, uh, while challenging ideas is good, I don't see how this shit that's going on right now is going to have any benefit in the long run. I mean, sure, it'll, uh, 
shrink groups. It will uh, solidify who actually believes in freedom and who doesn't. But I don't think it's getting us anywhere closer to that point. So I, I, just, I really wish that, that more people would uh, take a step back for a minute and remember or try to remember what it is they set out to do when they joined the Liberty community, when they uh, decided that they could not put up with politics anymore and that they were indeed an anarchist. Because most of the people, and including the people that I'm referring to here in this conversation, that, well, it's not a conversation, it's by myself, in this monologue. <laughs> the people I'm referring to here in this monologue, um, you know, a lot of them I kind of came up with in this in this in this community you know we all kind of found each other at the same time four or five years ago and uh like i said i, I could have swore we all had the same goal which was finding a way to bring an end to government so that we could attempt to have actual freedom but now it just seems that you know it's more important to get likes it's more important to form your echo chambers and actually a obtaining freedom has become a an afterthought. So this is why I have been trying to get this th thought across in multiple forms uh, on multiple platforms, especially recently. Uh, just the idea that, you know, practice over theory. Uh, just like uh, my, my buddy Shane Radliff from Liberty Under Attack uh, likes to say because of, of his other podcast, he started the Vanu podcast, direct action over political crusading. You know, it's the same thing to me where, you know, when you got the anarchists for Trump um, and the alt Rikers who claim to be anarchists that, you know, still cha champion all the quote unquote good things he claims he's going to be doing, um, it seems to me that, that these people don't really want to actually be free. They say they want to be free, but they're still stuck in the residual statism of, well, we have to deal with this. So it's, so, so we're going to, we're going to champion this guy because he's going to be better than the other one. Well, that still sounds like the lesser of two evils to me. Uh, I don't know where that got lost in, in the translation, because I could have swore that was, uh, that, that was a, a, a big point for most of us that, you know, it doesn't matter who you pick. It's still going to be shitty. Well, now more people seem to be straying away from that. And, uh, it's disheartening because like I said, I, I'm striving for freedom and I'm going to keep doing my thing. I'm going to keep, you know, trying to build up an intentional community. I'm going to try to surround myself with like-minded individuals and I am going to continue to take government head on in some aspects and work around it as much as possible in other aspects. Because theories are great, but if you haven't even bothered to try to put them into practice, and you keep repeating them ad nauseum, well, then you're just blowing smoke, man. You're not actually doing anything. And you're not helping me or anybody else who actually wants to obtain freedom. So like I said earlier, you know, you can have an ethical theory that's sound, that's great. But if it has no practical application, fuck it, man. What good is it to you? You can, I mean, you can sit there and, and, and pat yourself on the back and claim the moral high ground. Wonderful. Doesn't make you any more free. Anyway, like I said at the beginning, this whole thing had just been grinding my gears because, well, freedom's important to me. And while not everybody has to visualize freedom the same way I do, it sure as hell would be nice if more people actually tried to obtain it rather than just talk about it and put other people down who were actually out there doing it. One more, one more point on that, that actually brings, brings to mind uh, specific instances of this where a lot of folks 
are constantly putting down agorists. Um, I've seen recently other people attacking egoists. Um, and then there's, of course, everybody attacking communists and calling everybody a commie or a lefty. Um, the sad thing is, is most of these people, I'm fairly certain, haven't read any of the works of any of the people that they're supposed that they're trying to disparage. Uh, they haven't actually read any of this information. They're just gleaning it from other people who have told them, "Oh, this is crap. You, this is this is bullshit. These people are leftists. They they don't they they they're not compatible with uh, libertarianism." If that's what you want to think, fine. But you know, there's people out there like uh, Derek Bros, for example who's actually out there trying to do things right now. You know, he's an inspiration to me. He's the reason that I, I want to go try to start my own intentional community. You know, there's groups of agorists around that I know who are out there doing it every day. And despite what you may hear from some of the bloviating idiots who denounce agorism without actually having ever read anything by Konkin or any other agorist for that matter, or who don't actually understand agorism. No, most agorists don't think that the state is just going to magically disappear if we do things our way. Simply not true. They, like I, just try to work outside the system in hopes that more people will join us because if more people do, then the system won't simply go away, but it will, in fact, start to become obsolete because once more people realize that they can work outside the system and that, you know, death and destruction doesn't rain down upon them because of that, more people will realize how ineffective and how useless government actually is. So it's not a matter of just wishing the state away. It's a matter of putting the theories that we believe in into practice right now and trying to show others what is possible when you actually get off your ass and do something. And that's probably the most important message out of all this. If you want freedom, if you want to see freedom in your lifetime, sitting around and theorizing about it and bickering back and forth on social media and getting the accolades from your sycophants isn't going to achieve that. But getting off your motherfucking ass and getting out there and trying to put certain theories into practice stands a much better shot. But then again, what the fuck do I know? Thanks for listening, everybody. This has been Abolitionist Abstractions, and uh, I'll catch you next time. Peace. This is Michael Dean from the Freedom Teens Radio Show. I've run websites since 1996 and have used over a dozen web hosts in that time. Agoristhosting.com is the only one that hasn't broken my heart. Agorist Hosting's uptime and service is stellar, and their DDoS mitigation is the best I've seen. That's important because if you tell the truth in this world, you'll ruffle feathers. No matter what the haters hit us with, Agorist Hosting keeps our websites online. If you have a mission-critical commercial presence or a world-changing activism site, go with agoristhosting.com.